Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Northwest Georgia Cryptics. Uh, of course, tonight I'm, I'm joined by Blake Duckworth, my co-host, and Mr. C. Wayne Wilson uh, is our guest tonight. Uh, Wayne has had many encounters with Bigfoot, and we're going to sit back and let him uh, uh, discuss some of the uh, higher-raising tales that he's got. Wayne, if you'll go ahead, buddy. Floor's yours. Yeah, you want it from the beginning, or you want it from whatever? Because <laughs> hey, I, man, just your story. What? What, just what your story, story, man. Well, I mean, from the very, very beginning of, like I said, back around um, 2015, you know, um, I would say I was at my lowest point in life. You know, doctors then told me I was going to lose my leg. My legs were going to deteriorate. And um, put me on all this medicine and stuff, and then I just we I just decided one day I can't take that stuff anymore. I'm forgetting how to get home, and uh, I forget a lot of stuff that happened. So you know, but then all of a sudden I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, oh, I can find vitamins to get better with. If I start thinking of these different things that I can heal myself with. I start caring about you know spending more time with my my daughter and my wife and my dogs. Something was happening to me. Something was happening to me, what I call like a spiritual awakening. And right around that time, like I said, I was gone. We came back home. It had been, it had been, you know, a real bad ice storm there. And when we got back home, um, I let my dogs out. My daughter runs back in the house. Says, "Daddy, a Bigfoot's been out there." And I said, "What do you mean?" I said, "There's no Bigfoots here." But there was a 15-foot structure out there, and they had put it where I could see it. They had placed this thing. I, I think I sent you a picture of it. But they had placed this thing um, in a section where it couldn't have failed. Nobody could have brought it. It was too big. And it was placed right there so I would see it. And and then, like I said, a few days later, I said, if there's a big foot here, there's got to be footprints. I said, there's got to be. I said, for something that big to leave, the, something that had to be that big to leave that structure. So, uh, so sure enough, sure enough, a few days later after snow melted, there was a 22-inch footprint. And, um, you know, that, that right there got me looking for them. And now, where, I, where did this take place at? Up here in uh, North Carolina, you know, up here near the Virginia line. Um See, they're, they're, the, the difference between how most people, you know, have an, have an uh, uh, interaction with them, it kind of happened to me different. It was almost like they, they wanted me to find them. And so I started, you know, you go from, like I said, you go from, your, you know, go from finding a structure to footprints. Then you start thinking what left them. Now I got to find what left them. And the next thing I know, I'm out there putting trail cams up and, you know, going out there every day trying to see where they're at. And, you know, of course, the trail cams didn't do any good. The only thing that kept the trail cams kept doing for me was every time I looked at the pictures, I'd get up and there'd be 2,000 pictures on it. And I'd be like, what in the freaking world has triggered this thing to 2,000 times? And every single one of the pictures were from aimed across the road. And it was these big things in these pictures. But, you know, at the time, I didn't even know what a Bigfoot looked like. You know, and then, you know, but I kept thinking to myself, well, if the trail cam's picking them up that far, maybe I need to take the trail cams down and get me a camcorder and see if I can find them. You know, and so that's what I did. And and it wasn't long. It wasn't long after that. I'm out there, like I said, taking um, taking pictures of some footprints that they left. And all of a sudden, just something came over me, and I, I looked up, and I looked back over in the field. There was a 15-foot giant looking right at me, and that's the first one I ever saw. And the, he kept, honestly, he kept me where that was the only one I could see for about a month. And then, you know, I got out there one day. I got out there one day and got the camcorder, and I recorded the first one I ever recorded. And I think it's funny. I got I released that on video not that long ago, and I just thought it was funny. It's not really good quality, but it's still crazy when you finally see one with your own two eyes on camera like that, you know. And but what happened? 
what happened with me then was I had still couldn't I still couldn't really see everything. It was just like it was just like they would come around my house at night. They would chant. They would chant. They would uh, they would get my dogs up. They would they would run around me at nighttime. If I'm out there, they'd be whistling at me and they'd run around me. And they were doing things to, to try to scare me, you know. And um, even even to the point where I went over there where I knew they were and tried to record them. And about five o'clock in the morning, I got a visitor in my window, in my bedroom window, looking dead at me, screaming at me with the biggest roar you ever heard. And he's shaking the darn house, basically telling me, you got too close. You better not do that again. And you know what? To this day, <laughs> I heeded that warning. I don't get too close to him. You know, but now it's to me, it's out of respect. You don't want to be. Today could have been a dangerous day if the because I was I was about seven feet from a dog man. And that thing could have that thing, if he had wanted to, could have ripped my head off. That's how close I was. And. You know, when you're out there, you think you're filming. I started filming something today that, I mean, it looked like it looked like bird feathers. It looked like a big wing of something. But it was, it was a white Bigfoot cloak. So when I put the camcorder down and I put the cell phone up, the cell phone's got an 8K, you know, 8K camera in it. And and when I put it back on there, that's when the, that's when the white Bigfoot came out. And, you know, you're going to get a better chance of getting something even clearer with 8K than you will, you know, with a – uh, standard, you know, high definition camcorder, you know, but to get back, like I said, to get back to the story, you know, they were doing what I call, and I tell people, I tell people um, that, that, you know, when you listen to all these encounters about people having these encounters, what it is a lot of times, especially if it's an encounter at your house, they're testing you, they're testing you basically to see if you're going to respond to them. They want to see if you're going to be scared of them or you're going to respond to them. Me, on the other hand, for some reason, I wasn't afraid of them. And I mean, even I think I sent you that lightning bolt picture. That was one of the that that was one of the nights, you know, I first ran into a dog man. And I mean, it scared me because I thought it was a devil. I mean, to be honest, when I'm that close to it and I didn't know what it was, I was like, you need to get out of my woods, you devil. So I walk away and freaking lightning bolt comes flying by my head and hits the fence. And not only was I out there, my wife was out there, my daughter was out there. We they, we all saw it. You know, somebody was trying to tell me when I posted the picture the other day. Somebody said that's just a cam, that's a camera um flash. I'm like, that's not a camera flash. You can see it where it hit the fence. I mean, if you look at the picture real good, and I felt the heat from it too. So it's. You know, when you have all that happen to you, you know, you think you wouldn't you wouldn't want to mess with the, whatever's out there, <laughs> you know, but I kept doing it. And you notice something was happening to me. I was three hundred and I was three hundred and thirty five pounds when I started messing with those big foots. Guess how much weight I lost? Almost 80 pounds. I mean, I lost that weight being out there with them, looking for them. And it's almost as if, hey. We're going to let you find us. We're going to get you looking for them, and we're going to get you back healthy. And, dude, I mean, look, that's been, that's been almost eight years now, and and I, I'm still walking a two-mile trail every couple of days, and I'm walking on my two, two legs that's supposed to be deteriorated by now. You tell me they can't affect you? I believe they can, you know, because why else? Wow. Why, yeah, I mean, why else would I, you know – to get to where I'm at, you know, to get to where I'm at physically and, and, and to be able to say, you know, I was joking with people on Facebook saying I'm the John Locke of the Bigfoot world. If anybody knows about that show Lost, that dude was in a wheelchair when that plane crashed. He's up walking around on that island and he's not supposed to be walking. So it's kind of the same without kind of, it's kind of a little real. I was doing to say, hey, I'm not supposed to be like this right now. I'm not supposed to be walking around. You know, I suppose mm-hmm. like the doctors told me, you're not going to drive no more. You're going to just be sitting at home. You're going to be doing this until you have to have your knee surgery or your hip surgery, you know. And then I found turmeric. And once I found turmeric and, and started taking that and vitamin D3 and magnesium and some of these other vitamins, I mean, I can wake up. And I mean, people don't know this about me. I can wake up some days and I have to grab the wall just to get up and, and get to the bathroom. 
But but once that day gets going and my legs start moving around, I'm good to go, you know. And <clears throat> but to get back to the to get back to the story, uh, you know, I, I got a couple questions real quick. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, like, all your encounters have they been on one particular piece of land? I mean, is is that pretty much what you're saying? Is where you live now? Is it, is it the property you live on, or? And then, well, no. Um, uh, most of the stuff with the dog knocking down a Bigfoot. I mean, that, that to me, I don't know if you've heard that story, but that story of that dog knocking down that Bigfoot is the one time, one true time, I was scared because I knew they were in the woods, and I knew there were several in the woods. And my and I let my dogs out, and my white boxer just flies in the air and hits him. You know, when he hits him, he goes down. I see him scrunch back up into the woods. My boxer falls back five feet. They all run to the spot where he fell and start sniffing of it. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't get these dogs in the house. Me and them both are all going to be killed, you know. But then I realized something. I realized something. They didn't even make an offer to, to retaliate. And that started telling me they, they're not there to hurt me. You know, they, if they wanted to, they could have. You know, and I mean, it's crazy because I let them dogs out every night. They would run around the tree. They'd run to the fence. And this night, they run out and they run right toward him and jump him. And only one of them hit him. But trust me, I've been hit by that dog like that before. And I have went down and I'm 6'4", 260 or 270 pounds. And she knocked me down like that. So I really believe she hit him. That's why. Man, he was standing in some. It looked like he was standing in a bunch of little sticks and stuff. So he may have tripped when she hit him. I don't think her, her body. I mean, the impact probably hit him. But I think the sticks kept him. He caused him to fall on down, you know. But and she was sore for about a week after it. Her ribs are sore. And then, then she would. My wife comes in the house one day and. He whispers back there with that Bigfoot again, and uh, and she said, I got her out, but she wouldn't come back. And then all of a sudden, she said, I heard the loudest roar you ever heard. And she said, Whisper, come running out in woods. So evidently, the one that she hit, she knew where he was. So she, I'm out there with her a day or so later, and uh, she goes back there again, and I hear it. I hear that roar, and, and she comes running back out, and and uh, you know. And after that point, all the dogs got their smell. So you're talking about I had five dogs, and all five dogs had that smell. So that means if they come in the yard, they knew they would been there. They'd, they would they, they would set out in the yard at nighttime. And it's so weird because we had neighbors on one side, but on the other three sides were nothing but woods. So the Bigfoots could come out, and, 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 the, and plus there were older people that lived on the side. They never came out of their house. So the Bigfoots could just come up and sit at the garage, and, and they would. They would sit out there, and I'd see them out there, you know. And But to get back to you about the, where everything happened, a lot of the, what I call a lot of the major stuff with learning things about them happened there. Um, when you, But then, you know, I had to move from there back in 2017, and then, like I said, you know, you'd be sitting here, you be sitting here, and it's it's August, and you know, and you're like, I I know they want me to find them, but I don't know where to go, and and then one day I'm looking at Facebook, my sister in law posting pictures that from her, this trail she went to, and I saw them in the pictures, and I said, well, that's where they want me to go, so I started going out there, and boy, ever since I've been going out there, the craziest stuff you ever seen has happened out there. But um, and then there's this other trail that I've I've been to that's like three miles long. I mean, I've captured um, I would say some of the um, some of the craziest stuff over there. I mean, I've captured one. It looks like a freaking devil. I think I sent you that picture too. He looks like a devil. You watch the video. Watch the video of that dude. I'm I'm filming these other things. I think I'm filming. And he's there behind the tree, and he comes out. And right when he comes out, that's when I capture that picture. And I don't know what he is. I don't think it's a Bigfoot. Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I also know there's been things I've captured and since I've been at this trail and that other trail. I mean, I've captured bird-like things. I mean, 
I've got a really clear picture of a couple of one one bird. Is, I call him Birdman, but he looks like a freaking giant. I mean, a giant eagle. And I mean, he's all white. He's got the big yellow nose, the big eyes. And I mean, but after we filmed that that documentary, My Journey with Monsters, I showed it to to to, to him when I when we were filming, and he left after that. One thing I want, one thing I gotta tell researchers. Don't be taking a lot of people to your spots because if you do, the Bigfoot might not be there the next time because he's trusting you to be there. He's not trusting. I've had that happen to me so many times when I would take somebody with me and I would show them and then I'd come back the next time and they wouldn't be there anymore. And, and it's weird how that happens, you know. But uh, that other trail, I mean, that other trail, I mean, I'm out there one day, I'm out there one day and I'm with my wife and it's kind of rainy. And I see this, I see this one, this Bigfoot that's, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure it was a Bigfoot, but he was standing back in there and he was about to take off running. And I was only, only my second. And, and then some people walked by and I turned my head and he was gone. I tried to track him, but he went so fast. I got this one picture, this one picture of that Bigfoot. To me is to me is such a magical thing because I saw him when he took off and I knew I knew what I was looking at when I filmed it. That's a that's another thing too. You know, a lot of people a lot of people will go out to the woods and they'll take pictures and then they'll come back home and see what they got in their pictures. Me, on the other hand, I see it before I film it. And it, that's that's like today. I can't wait till y'all see that dog man video. I mean I didn't even know that was the third time in that spot today. It was I filmed twice there, and I went back because I jumped back down and I started seeing something moving a little bit further down. So I went back down that way, and I got eye shine in. I got eye shine in. So once I got done with that, I went back up there just to see. And like I said, I took my cell phone out and I got it, and and. That's the good parts. I mean, I know. I mean, we can go back. We go back to you know the original place we were at. I really believe that's a bigfoot. Um, I believe that's a bigfoot mating area. I believe that's an area because that land that where I found them at, that land has never been. That land has never been farmed. That nobody's ever lived on that land. I've seen UFOs land on that land. I've seen. I've seen everything you can think of as far as Bigfoot and Dogman goes on that property, and trust me, I'm I'm thinking about I'm thinking seriously thinking about if I can get approved for enough money, offering that lady that's got that house down there to try to buy it back. <laughs> that's how bad I want to get back there and live back there with them Bigfoots again. You know, you know, I went back down there, I went back down there uh, a couple weeks ago, and. You could just feel the energy. I mean, you could just feel it. You you knew they were there, and you could feel it. You know, it's kind of the way the trail is I'm at now. You know, I oh, and the, speaking of that trail, the 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 craziest thing that ever happened. Now, you imagine a few days before this, you're recording something that looks like a shadow. And you think it's a shadow, and you get home and you realize it's not a shadow. It was some kind of weird looking being that had a big mane, had big, big long fingers, had these really, really thick thighs, and these big, scrawny feet, these bony legs. And I'm thinking, that's not a dog, man. What is it? So I start looking up some research, and I'm like, crap, did I just record Anubis? So I start thinking that might be that might be the only time that thing has ever been took a picture of ever. And uh, a, a few days later, we're going back to the trail, and freaking men in black standing there. Now, why in the world was he there? Only thing I can think of is that thing was in another dimension, and it wasn't supposed to be there. So he showed up to close that portal or whatever. But he showed up. I mean, when you see one in person, I mean, the sucker was seven feet tall. He had the black hat, the black glasses, the black tie, the 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 white 
thing. He had the black jacket on, the black slacks, the black black dress shoes. And I told my daughter, I said, if this is really a, if he's really out here after us, I said he ain't gonna walk this trail in no dress shoes. I said, so let's just give him twenty minutes, and then we'll, we'll see how far he gets. And if he's really after us, then he'll be gone. So. We go out there. We're out there a good hour, hour and a half, and we haven't seen him once. As we're leaving, he's behind us, and he's following us all the way back. So instead of thinking, I mean, here's the crazy part. When this stuff happens to you, why not turn around and take a picture? I mean, that's what's scaring me about the, the whenever the money shot Bigfoot comes out. It's going to be so good. Well, you take a picture or you just won't. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, I kick myself for not taking this picture, but at the same time, if I had, I might be dead right now. You know, you just don't know. But me and Kira got out of there. And then, I mean, the stuff that started happening after that, I mean, finally, it's, finally everything stopped. You know, and they're not messing with me anymore. And I think it's because. You know, they just didn't want me bringing up a whole bunch of that crap in that in that my journey with monsters documentary. You know, um, y'all got any uh, you you uh, you, sp- yeah. you 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 talked about the uh, uh, document uh, the uh, uh, documentary there. Uh, I'm gonna bring a picture of it up here, and I'll just let you kindly explain to the viewers uh, when this thing was actually when this was done. Uh, Right there's a picture of it. Yeah. Uh, when when did you actually uh, record that uh, documentary? Uh, I recorded it back in back early in March of uh, last year. I think it was March. But it did it way. Stacy Brown was so blown away when he got here that he he came right back in October and shot another one. <laughs> so that just tells you how blown away he was. What's so great about bringing him up here? And I mean, I don't know if y'all know him, but but the, the thing was, Stacy was a skeptic. He thought I was crazy, you know, and he wanted to come up here and he wanted to come up here and see for himself. And I mean, we're not even out there the day we first day we film it right now. I've gotten messages on Facebook from people saying they're going to burn the woods down that I'm at. If that didn't work, they come back saying they're going to take my dogs away from me. Then when that didn't happen, I got a phone call saying, what's it going to take to shut you guys up? He said, no, it's how it went. What's it going to take to shut you up? We keep we keep seeding the skies to keep them quiet, and you keep waking them up. That's the exact words that dude said. And then I started realizing, I started trying to figure out these numbers and stuff. And I'll start realizing it's a whole network of these things, these people. So you might see one man in black, but that ain't the end of it. They got people on Facebook watching you. They got people, you know, watching your house. I mean, I had a white van that set up at my house for weeks. They even they even remodeled the house down there just so they could spy on me. They had a, they had one. In fact, my neighbor, his son is, is in some kind of deal with them, and my, and and. Uh, and he was brought back to live over there to keep an eye on me. I mean, that's the kind of threat they thought I was. So, okay, we go and we film that movie. And um, and and uh, I think we got a, we got a me and him's got a little interview we did, but but it explains it. But we're about halfway down that what you call a bulwark where there's this pond. I mean, and Stacy both looking at their pond, and guess what? There's a dude in church clothes standing in the middle of it, and asking me, "Was my name Kirby?" And I said, "I don't know no Kirby." And I looked at Stacy and said, "This dude's crazy." And Stacy said, "He looks like an alien," and I, I ain't joking. We hadn't even been two seconds said that he was gone, and I'm like, "There's no physical way he could have got out of that pond." I said, "What do you do? Jump up on the hill?" Stacy said, he's not on the hill. We start looking and the sucker was way, way on the other side of the trail. And there's no physical way he gets out of that middle of that pond. And there's mud without us seeing him again. It's like he teleported right out of that freaking pond. So you got you got to start thinking. You got to start thinking, you know, 
is there actual people out here that's got physical abilities that can teleport? And to me, to me, you start thinking there might be aliens on this planet that we don't know already. It's something, you know, it's something because that Joker went out of the middle of that pond and 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 took off. And I mean, when you start thinking about that, you got to start thinking about, you know. And I really want to investigate this so bad is is investigate the people who have abilities to darn do that, you know. And you know, evidently. From what Bigfoot's told me back when they were telepathically talking to me, they told me that we all got that ability. We've all got that ability. It's just in the, it, it, we got to evolve into it. And our species hadn't evolved like they, theirs has. That's why they're so more advanced than we are, you know. You know, and you ever always wonder how you're chasing after one and he only leaves one footprint. Well, I figured out why they do that. They'll leave one to get you interested. Usually the other one's up on a bank or something. And you never see it because it's grass there. But I've noticed, you know, I've I've went out there before and found a whole line of tracks. But this was when it was snowing and nobody was out there, you know. I mean, there's even been there's even been one time I went out there and the place had been tore apart. I mean, I'm talking about sides of bridges had been ripped off the sides and threw 15 feet down. I mean, the, they got these hundred, two, three hundred pound metal, metal tables and stuff that was down. It had been threw up on top of the darn, off the, these long, steep steps. Something came in there with a lot of anger and came in there and tore everything up. And the police come up and said it was. You know, some dudes run ATVs in there, but guess what? I found no tracks. I found no ATV tracks, and my theory is something really big and angry came through there. And the only thing physically that could do that was either a dog man or a Bigfoot, because no human could have picked that stuff up and threw it. I mean, and I did an EVP out there and tried to get them to tell me one night, and they did tell me. They said we did it. <laughs> I don't know which one. But there's another thing too about there's another thing too about Bigfoot. You know, if you ever if you ever you know you ever t you talk about people that have these really mean encounters and they get attacked. The Bigfoots have always the understanding is they live in they live in um, I would say like tribes like family. You know, they live in like family units, right? And when one one attacks a human. They kick them out of the group. And usually when you find a lone Bigfoot that's trying to attack somebody, that's usually the – I believe that's why – that's why, you know, you people have these encounters that get hurt, you know, because I've had so many freaking encounters, and they not mess with me other than grabbing my arm. They've grabbed my arm before. Um, well, they've actually grabbed my arm a couple times, you know, but, but um, you know, it's – it's crazy how you can be out there by yourself and anything could kill you. <laughs> I mean, I'll be on that. I was on that four mile trail. I was on that four mile trail. I was in the mile three. There's nobody out there at all. I mean, I could have fell off a cliff and nobody would even know that I was there. And I'm hearing something coming, running toward me. And I thought it was a deer at first, but I could never see it. And it kept running, in it. and then I said, it might be somebody in a big dog, and I can't find it. It gets louder, and it gets louder, and then it runs right by me. And it grabs my arm when it does, it leaves a red spot, and it was a freaking Sasquatch. He just did it because there wasn't nobody else out there, and they could do it, you know. A lot of times, I think it's the young ones. I think it's the young ones that like to play, you know. I think they like they, the young ones want to play, but the other time, the other time, they grabbed my arm was out at this trail I go to now. And shoot, I was walking, walking, looking at my cell phone, and then something just grabbed my arm and made me stop. So I start looking around. I put the camera up, and then I see there's a Bigfoot up on the hill. And I'm like, did you do that? I said, why did you do that? And I looked down, and there's some, there's two copperheads coming across. He grabbed my arm to keep me from walking on those snakes. Ain't that something? I mean, I would have walked on him too if I hadn't. That's wild. Yeah, I know it. <laughs>
He's supposed to put that in that documentary. We, but he, the, I'm hoping one day he'll make the whole thing into a, you know, make the whole thing. But the next one, we we've shot another one, and you're gonna see me ghost hunting. Nobody's seen me ghost hunting yet. And when you do see this and see how much happens with ghosts, I mean, Bigfoot stuff is Bigfoot stuff is you know that's the norm for me to do. But when I actually went out there and tried to go hunt, the activity that happened, I mean, the first night, I mean, and I think this was a Bigfoot, to be honest with you. First night, we had this, what you call a um, gas pipeline, but it's woods on each side of it. And um, we're out there, and, I'm, and I ain't even out there five minutes, and we got a big nine-foot-tall set of eyes looking at us right in the woods. And I get that I get that on video. I say, everybody come over here and look. There's some eyes right there. And um, and then later on, I'm chasing after a Bigfoot. I see him. He's running through there. And I want Stacy to get it on camera. I'm not chasing him to be mean to him. I just want Stacy to see to see what I've seen, you know. And um, so later, we take this rim pod, and, and I take it over to the edge of the woods where I thought I'd seen the set of eyes. Um, I turn it on. I have the EMF in my hand, right? And I have the EMF in my hand, and it is going off so bad that my hand is burning. I mean, it was that hot from where it was burning. It's something really, really strong around me. At the same time, the REM pod's going off. Hmm. I mean, and he's got this on camera. I can't wait for y'all to see this stuff. I mean, you know, and this... And then it was like the next night we go to a haunted church, and this this place has got ghosts in it. And I mean, we ain't even out there at at those woods where it was even a good ten minutes where I was. I had the EMF on one, and next thing I know, Stacy screams and something something grabbed him. I put the EMF on him, and that's where it was at. It grabbed him. We go back around the woods. Now it's raining too, and we're getting activity, and. It's raining and it's raining and then then uh, I had the EMF again. I said something is in front of me. We try to debunk it. We can't debunk it. It's just there. And I said, well, get the spirit box. And when he goes to get it, my hand turns freezing cold. I mean, my hand is frozen. I tell every single one of them, come and touch my hand. I said, come and touch my hand. And oh, that picture you just see. And that is either a dog man or that's Anubis in another dimension. And you wouldn't believe how 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 creepy that thing looked when I took that picture. <laughs> I mean, I noticed it from his teeth. And and that's a dimension. That's if you look and see, look at all the awful looking creatures. That's if you look at that picture really good, you'll see there's creatures all around him. And, and and it came out like that, but it looks like I kid you not, it looks like the werewolf from Van Helsing. I mean, it, but I took it in the freaking woods. I mean, if that's what they really, if that's what they really, that's kind of what the very first one I saw looked like when I saw him, you know. But 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 that's cra that's crazy, in it? When you get something, I mean, I wish it was more clearer, but. It's because of all that stuff in the in the picture. So this this picture this picture right here, Wayne, you you uh, this thing was actually interdimensional when you took this picture. Well, what I did, what, what I did, was I saw something down there. It, it was down the hill from where I was at, and I kept seeing something shining down there, which was his teeth. So I kept I kept I kept on filming it, and I kept filming it, but I took like multiple shots of it. And two shots came out that looked like that. So, you know, it's like the video ain't worth a crap because you can't make it out. But the pictures are the one that, that you can see really good. You know, here's something even weirder about here's something even weirder about this 4K camera. I mean, this 8K camera, the videos t t seem to turn out better than the actual pictures do. And that's strange, ain't it? But, um, I, I I think I sent you a picture of a dog man in that last batch. It was the most recent one I took, and that was about three days ago. Um, I took the night vision on this cell phone, and I turned the night vision on. When I did, I saw that I saw that dog man, 
And um, yeah, that's not one of mine. That's not one of mine. <laughs> but uh, is that one of yours? Yeah, that's that's uh, the one I'm showing here now is actually a uh, nest that I took over in Gilmer County back in uh, God, I think it was like uh, September, October of last year. Yeah. Uh, it was a smaller nest. The insides probably measured about seven foot. Uh, but what was so weird about this one, it had fresh branches, pine branches, broke yeah. and stacked across, or actually weaved uh, in a, uh, together. And then it had an opening at the front where you could go down and go in it, and then there were pine bran branches that was weaved and stacked in the bottom like a mattress. That's kind of like what, yeah, that's kind of like what I found the other day. They had took all these fallen trees, and they lined them up, and they built almost like a wall. But then you see there's, they built walkways in between them. I mean, down there where I used to live, I mean, um, we had a tornado come through there one night, and uh, we had this great myrtle tree outside. And evidently, they we were gone, and we rode back in that tornado. It was on the other side of the road. And me and my daughter get inside. The, we get inside the driveway. And um, I noticed the door's been ripped off the dog kennel and threw clear across the yard. I noticed my gr old grill that I had sitting up against the garage had been threw across the yard. And... But I was like, the tornado didn't come over here. So why in the world is all this damage over here? And then I look, and they took the crepe myrtle tree, and they ripped it apart and made these walkways all the way around it. So while we were gone, they decided to build them something really quick so they could get out of the storm. But you could, this thing was so unique that you could just walk in it. I mean, there's two or three different ways, in fact. In fact, they, they, they realized I could walk in and get to them. They blocked it off with a big tree. You know, they did. They actually did that. They took a big tree and threw it down and blocked it. But, uh, you know, I went back. This, this is what's so sweet about it. My wife goes out there. My wife goes, well, let me, let me tell you the real scary part. We get in the house and we go in my bedroom. And my bedroom, my bedroom window is a good 15 foot off the ground. And something had, these are storm windows too. They only open up from the inside. Something really powerful had pulled that storm window down. So I think that storm was coming in and it caught them by surprise. And they're trying to figure out any way they can to get out. You know, and, and, uh, but what's funny is my wife, my wife comes back. Um, my wife comes back out there and she says, they messed up my, they tore up my favorite tree. And, um, and uh, so I'm sitting in the house that day, and uh, I'm sitting in my house that day, and and I get the worst kind of headache you could think of. And I told I told my wife, I said, I said, I think they want me to go out there for something. I said, I keep getting this feeling that they, they want me to come out there. So I did, and uh, I kid you not, they had made this asterisk out of these tree limbs and hung it up. And they'd hung it up in a neat way, and they wanted me to go get her so I could show it to her. It was their apology for tearing up her tree. I mean, ain't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, it was good. Uh huh. Go ahead, Blake. Well, it was uh, it was one time uh, we had about it was one. Yeah, I got. I'm taking my bike to work, but I'm gonna stay on here. Uh, one time I was uh. You know, one time it was about a, you know, we had about. But, uh, I'm out there looking and I don't see them nowhere. And I'm like, where did you go? And so, so I'm looking and, uh, <clears throat> All right, so I'm looking, and uh, so I go up to this edge of the woods, and I notice this piece of uh, this piece of wood had been broken up into 
bunch of different pieces and made into an arrow. And it was almost as if they're telling me, hey, we went this away. <laughs> I mean, and it's like, it's a, you know, everybody talks about the glyphs and stuff that they leave for them. I mean, how many people can say they got an actual arrow point to where they went? <laughs> but. Freaking UFO it started hovering down, and I'm hearing the Bigfoots just walking around chanting. It's almost like you know how you would hear like an Indian chant, and they're chanting and they're walking toward that UFO. So it may be something so that they do hop on those UFOs. You know, I mean, I kind of believe they're just a piece of people that's been here forever, but. At the same time, you can't deny, I believe we came off those freaking UFOs. I don't believe, you know, it's just a lot of, when you get into that, though, you got to get into a lot when you start getting into the alien stuff. And that's why I kind of try to stay away from it. <laughs> you know, they may, and that could be also, too, why the man in black showed up, because I did see, I did see quite a bit of UFO activity, because that land over there had it, you know. I mean, the land I'm at now, I believe the reason why it's so active is because, you know, you got two ponds there, you know, deer everywhere. You got all kind of other kind of vegetation there. So, you know, why wouldn't you? If I, if I, if I was a person that needed a place to live and I was going to live off the land, that'd be the perfect place to go live, you know. Well, now let, let me ask you this, Wayne. As far as uh, uh, have you actually have you actually found deer carcasses or anything? You know where uh, the Bigfoot had actually been feeding on these things, or, or I don't anything honestly, of that nature. Honestly, I you know what I think they do. I mean, I honestly what I think they do is I think they kill those deers to get to the coyotes because they keep the coyotes around them. Ain't you ever noticed that usually if you hear a Bigfoot yell? It's usually after about two or three coyotes have, you know, it, it's, it's, like, oh, yeah. it's, like, it's like, it's like they would do that to me that you would hear, you would hear, you know, you would hear and you got to where you could actually understand the Bigfoot yell, you know, and it usually would come after the coyotes had done yelled a couple times. And I think they keep them around them for some reason. I guess it's their pets, you know, it wouldn't, it would make sense, wouldn't it? You know, man, that's one thing for sure. I mean, with mine and Ricky's experiences that we've had down where one place that where I had my personal sighting at, you know, that's one thing that I can vouch for is the coyote thing. I mean, like every time that we would ever have a howl, it was either the howl first, then coyotes would follow, or like you said, sometimes we have heard howls where they were in the mix with the coyotes. Now, you know, that's that's a theory is that, you know, Bigfoot stay around packs of coyotes. Why? But I mean, I, that, hey, what you're saying there, I mean, I can follow that. I mean, that, yeah. That. yeah, and and not only that, and, you know, not only that, you know, I've actually heard them, I've actually heard them, they'll, they'll mock ambulances, they'll mock, they'll mock other dogs. I mean, I've actually heard them out well, there. We've had one uh, howl back that sounded just like Ricky. It was like a doppelganger howl. Like, I mean, it sounded just like Ricky. And just kind of a backstory on what happened. We were down at the lake that I was just talking about where we had a lot of our sightings uh, yeah. or our experiences. Uh, we had walked back in a cove, and it was really quiet that night, and we'd done some howls, nothing. Well, we started to head back and I was like, Ricky, do one how we'll just do one last how. And as soon as I mean, no sooner than Ricky stopped howling, something within I mean it had to be it was on the other side, like the water was down, we were in a cove, it was on the other side of the cove. It probably wasn't hundred and fifty yards from us, but it sounded just like Ricky. I mean <laughs> like it could not have sounded any closer to his how. So yeah, they can. They that's, that's true. Yeah, and one thing, you know, uh -huh. I actually believe that these things are, are migratory. I believe that they, uh, they actually 
follow the game, they follow the deer, whatever. Uh, as their food sources move around, they move around, but yet now they do come back to the to the same territory because the incident that Blake is talking about took place back in 2011. All right, those things now 2011. That's been what uh, nine um, years ago. Yeah. Uh, and those things are still in, area. in that same area that they were nine years ago. Well, here's something I've figured out, too. Uh, get my door closed. Something else I've figured out, too, is this group, this dog man that I recorded today is the same dog man I done recorded about four times. So I believe there's a family of them that are living right in that area where I keep catching the same dog man. No, we've never, I mean, I've never done much research in dog man. I mean, I know what it is. I mean, yeah. and everything. Now, we did have something happen to us last time we were down there at that, uh, at the at the lake we were just talking about. Um, this was back in March. Um, never heard a howl like it, but I mean, if I could describe it, I mean, it, it was more of a canine howl, but it wasn't a dog. It wasn't a. It wasn't a coyote. I you know, uh, somebody we we had heard a somebody had sent a um, a howl that or was talking about. I uh, can't remember exactly, but anyways, basically described the howl, and he believed that it was uh, a juvenile. Uh, Bigfoot, but I mean, I don't know if it was actually a Bigfoot or if it was something else. It's the only time I've ever heard anything like that, but it sounded like a really like laughing, like canine, like laughing hyena, demon. I don't even know what it was. I, I would say more. I would say more demon or like like I've actually captured EVPs out there. You know, using a spirit box on Bigfoot is funny. You, you know, I mean, people don't know that you can actually use it and communicate, and you're going to get some responses from Bigfoot. But I've actually gotten some really mean growls. I mean, evil type growls. And I mean, how do I know that that ain't dog man coming through? You just don't know. And I mean, if they can compute, if they can communicate with you spiritually. Like, like you know, my, like telepathically, I would think they can communicate you with you through a spirit box too. And I didn't know it till we, Stacy brought his spirit box up here, and we tried to use it where Bigfoot was, and we were getting intelligent responses from Bigfoot that only I would know. I mean, these were these were responses that would, you know, that they come up and tell Stacy. Do you believe Wayne? Do you do you like Wayne or whatever? And the response came back that he has all the power. And then they, and the next one comes up and tells him to pack his stuff up and leave. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it can't be. You know, I don't think they responded too good with him because he never. He's always. He's it's still to this day. Um, he believes, but he also don't want to believe these things that we're recording or, or, or actual, you know, real. I mean, he does to a point, you know, but, but that, but like I explained to him and we all know this, we all get, you know, we all get grief with our pictures sometimes, you know, the reason why people give me so much grief is because I'm not afraid to put it out there. You know, I'm not afraid of, Hey, if it's something really cool, I'm going to share it because the reason I do that, it ain't because I'm trying to troll somebody's group. I want everybody to see what they really look like. You know, I don't want people, people don't, people don't understand, you know, they don't look like the Patterson film. None of them I've come in contact with look like that. And it makes, and it makes you wonder, don't it? You know, and I mean, when you're, I would say this much. I mean, you see what I mean? That looks more, to me, looks more like a dude in a suit. <laughs> it's a dude in a suit with cheap. Uh, from what I was told, anyway, 
it's a dude in a suit with cheap cheap stuff stuck all over him and filmed from a distance where it would where, to me when I watch that 4K when it looks like he's wearing wearing khakis. It looks like you see khakis moving when he's walking. But but there's also a there's also my theory too, um, that if it ain't fake, it's probably some some dudes done got got made it up with a gorilla because that looks more like an ape that don't look like some of these Sasquatches don't look like apes. They look like we do. They just look like bigger versions of us with more hair, you know. And and you, I mean, when you see one, when you see one move, I've seen them before. I don't know if y'all have, but I've seen them come by me at, like a silhouette. I've seen this silhouette come by a couple times actually. And the silhouette, if I I would have loved to catch that on camera, but when it happened, I was just I think I I was messing with my daughter, and she was looking, she was messing with one of, the, with one of those bulls, and I look up and I see it just take off in front of me, and it looked like I seen out a predator, and that's what I tell people: you want to know what they're really like, just watch Predator. I think whoever made that movie, um, whoever made that movie had his own encounter with Bigfoot. And and that movie is more based. I would say that, not just sitting in the trees with weapons and stuff, but that with the abilities that that thing had is similar, almost similar to what Bigfoot does. You know. Yeah, that, you, you, uh huh. You know, a lot of people would call that far out there, but yeah, you know, one one of our team members, Brian. Um, you know, you you're talking about how they are more human like, and you know, you know, I, I can tell you, you know, my encounter. Um, I was it wasn't a super close encounter, but it's close enough to get full on details of the creature or the creatures. Um, mine were more of I don't want to say stereotypic looking Bigfoot, but I didn't get to see no real facial features or anything like that. Now, Brian, he had an encounter that's kind of similar to what you're talking about there, as far as the cloaking and the the just the 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 weird side of of the encounters. Um, it was and like what, and, what, and what he described was a more of a man like face than you know a, a gorilla like creature, like a lot of people describe as Bigfoot. I would, I would go, I would go, I had this point and shoot camera. I would go stick it in the woods at night and I would take pictures of them and I would get pictures of, of them because they would be in the woods, but the pictures would be red or they'd be green, but they weren't the pictures of the actual outside. So why in the world were the pictures being red at nighttime? You know, and to me, what I think it is that they were sitting in another dimension. They were sitting in another, but the camera still pick them up. But I've gotten so many pictures of one I used to call Mr. Mustache. He looked so freaking human, and he, and he had a mustache, and, and he had a almost human-like hair. But I've run into the ones that's so big. I mean, you run into the really big ones. The really big ones, they look like, they look like giant people, but they got all that hair that makes them look like that. But now there is a couple of them. I think I recorded one. Um, I put it uploaded it the other day a few days ago, but it's a mama and a baby. And the mama and the mama Bigfoot that I've seen her a lot down through them woods and she did look like a gorilla. She looked more like a gorilla and, and the baby does too. But I don't think all of them do. I think uh, honestly, you know what I think? It's like it's like us humans. You know, all look at all the different yeah. colors of us. Look at all the different colors of us. I mean, you also got to think about if they, you know, if, if they are a being of this earth, you know, what kind of interbreeding, what kind of, you know, the breeding over the years has happened to produce these different yeah. creatures. Somebody said that's what the swamp ape is. He's it's a somebody a human bred with it. That's why it's why it's like it is. Uh, evidently, evidently, I don't know. Somebody said down in Arkansas and Alabama, they're more mean and more aggressive. Yeah, and I mean, that's what I was just getting ready to say. You know, you look at different areas and every every area and every region kind of reports 
you know, similarities but differences at the same time. You know, you, you look at the Getty. Across, you know, we're we're talking thousands of miles, not land connected. Yeah. You know, if, if they're all over the world, I mean, they've got to be different different species, I guess right. is what you would say. I mean, same right, genetic, different, different species different, or subspecies. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think there's just – honestly, uh, to my experience, I don't think there's just Bigfoot and Dogman out there. I think there's other things, too. Well, there are a lot in this world. I mean, you know, that's that's one thing about, like, the cryptics and, you know, paranormal and everything. I mean, you, you've, you know, like, hearing your story and everything, you know, I, I can see you probably do get a, some ridicule for it. But the thing is, <laughs> like, you've got to be – if you're going to be in this, this field of stuff, you've got to keep an open mind because just to even think some of these things are possible or even have sightings or whatever, you've got to be an open-minded person. So you can't discredit something, what somebody goes through. I mean, or what they describe. I would wake up and say, I would wake up. Like I said, I was having these, these visions and stuff. I would wake up if it was right after it happened. And write it down, and oh, not and write it down. I would write it down and post it to Facebook, just so I wouldn't forget it. Now, who writes something down at five o'clock in the freaking morning? You know that that just happened. You know it was because I didn't want to forget it. You know, because later on in the day I might not remember it. You know, yeah. and and the things they showed me and the things they told me. I mean, it's crazy. I, I tell people, I say, I graduated from Bigfoot school. I learned everything I learned from them. I mean, how crazy it is to 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 know all I know and never read nobody's books and know I know, but I'm not watching a lot of people's videos. I never did because I didn't want. I, I, it's come on to me by accident. This did. This wasn't. This wasn't me. I mean, I come out of the freaking wrestling business. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine, you know, retiring from the wrestling business because your knees and stuff? You never, never going to think your life's going to take a 360, and now you're a Bigfoot person. <laughs> That's how it happened. You know? Wayne, let, let me ask you this, Wayne. You're talking about having interactions with these things, as far as where you where you can actually communicate with them. Well, when you're doing when when you're communicating with one of these things. What yeah. what's it like? Because I have I have personally never had this happen. I don't. Well, I, I, only, now don't get me wrong. It only happened when where I was used to live, where they were in my woods. They would come to me at night, and they was come to me at night, and I'd be asleep. And then if I got into a deep enough sleep, next thing I know, I would be somewhere, or or, or for that matter, you know, sometimes they would just be they'll be in my head telling me things, but they, but they taught me. They actually taught me how to keep, you know, my whole entire life was dealing with ghosts. And you believe every place I lived, I had ghosts or black black entities. Almost every place I lived, you know, I moved out of a house because it was so haunted, so my child wouldn't be born in it. It, was, it had gotten so bad. It had gotten so bad I had been punched in my back, things floating around the house, doors slamming, Things walking through the walking through the, and it all happened when she got pregnant with my daughter. They didn't want that kid born, and, and I got her out of that house. And after that, we moved to an apartment. No ghost. Next thing I know, I'm going, coming home one day, and there's a black entity in my daughter's room. And I go back and ask the lady I rent from. I said, "Somebody died here recently." She said, "Well, I'm not supposed to say, but but the third the third apartment down from you, a guy hung himself." So bam, that's why the black entity was visiting Kira, my daughter's room. I mean, we moved from that place into a, a freaking hundred thousand dollar house, and we got ghosts there, but we got friendly ghosts at this one. I mean, everything there was friendly. They just like to turn on the electronics, and uh, we really didn't have no problems there. But 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 then the guy, I guess the people wanted just to move. Because they wanted to sell the house, so we we were releasing it, so we we didn't buy it, so we had to move. But we moved quick, took the first thing we could find, which was a bad idea. The dude showed us the house in the dark, and and we moved in the, I guess the next day or so. And boy, that was the worst place you could ever move into. I mean, you're talking about 
waking up seeing these black demons looking right at you. I mean, standing in my daughter's room looking at me. I mean, they'd be standing in there looking. You couldn't go upstairs. It was so creepy. My One of my boxers got so sick that he was having constant diarrhea, you know, you know, and, and it was just a nightmare. And then when we got, then when we moved out of that house, we found that place down there where, where all this activity happened and no ghosts. And I'm thinking to myself, for the first time, I don't have any ghosts. And if the reason why I don't have any ghosts anymore is because of what was in those woods. And they taught me how to physically, they explained it to me, or uh, it was explained to me um, that what was happening was when I was sleeping, I was opening up portals and letting these, these, these things out. So I was what you call a conduit for, for ghosts. You know, they would come out of, they would come out when I'm sleeping. I mean, it was so bad in that one house I lived, I couldn't even go to bed. I had to stay up the freaking six o'clock in the morning before I could go lay down. Because as soon as I laid down, anytime in between that, the activity would start. And you couldn't sleep. So, you know, finally I'm sleeping good. And they come and explained it to me. They said, they're going to teach me how to communicate with them. But to keep to be able to keep these portals closed and only let things come into your you know come into your mind that you want in your mind basically you know like my brother who my brother who died back in 1998 on New Year's Eve 20 some years finally comes and tells me what happened to him you know and I thought that was, that was one of the, one of the kind of things you want to you know you want to know you want to talk to your brother you know. You know, and but but you don't also know you got to be careful because I was being I was being told that these uh, gray aliens would mess with you and pretend to be Bigfoot. Um, demons would tr try to pretend to be Bigfoot. You had to start learning how to distinguish between both of them, you know. And that's what happens when you got abilities. I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy to, to find find out. You know, you knew you were kind of psychic. But then you didn't know until Bigfoot came how psychic you really was, you know, and then it just everything elevated, you know. Now, like I said, what it is now is I don't communicate with them now, but I guarantee you the day I find me a place, there's some woods behind it, some real woods, and there's Sasquatches there, I guarantee you they'll stop messing with me again. But since I'm living in the middle of town, it's very rare you're going to see anything in the middle of town. You know, but but I have come out there and found a footprint beside my car. You know, so they will come in the city, but I don't think they're out there all the. They're not out there, and they're not communicating with me right here where I'm living at now. And I think that's why. You know, but I kind of like it. I kind of like it for one reason. Now I can live my family life at home, and I can go out there to that trail where they're at and visit with them. It's almost like 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 you got one family and then you got another family and you don't let it overrun your whole life, you know, that way. You know, and, and, and I think that's good because some people they make it make it their life, you know, they don't keep they don't keep their family life separate. And I kinda do now, you know. I don't let it all you know, I don't let it all overlap itself no more. <clears throat> Hey, you could be like a cousin that I had one time uh, years ago that uh, he was a truck driver. And uh, he was married to a lady down here in Atlanta. And this this goes back to you talking about separate families. Uh, yeah. He was married to a lady here in Atlanta. All right. He talks me into going to California with him. I was about 14 years old. So I ride with him to California in the big truck. Man, I thought I was, you know, on top of the world. Well, actually, we get we get down to Orange County, California, and I meet his second family. He's got a wife and three kids down there. <laughs> He's got a wife and two kids in Atlanta. And, man, I'm going to tell you something. There's no way I would ever want to put myself in that type of position. Well, it's, it's the same way, like I said. It's the same way when people say they're out in the woods every day. When you're out in the woods every day, that's great. At the same time, what happens if you don't see your wife and you, as soon as she comes home, you're gone? <laughs> and then as soon as you get back, she's asleep. And then the next thing you know, it turns into a routine and now your relationship starts suffering 
because you know you're spending more time with, with, with the other thing than you are your actual wife, you know. And uh, and it was it, it got like it was like that in the beginning because I was out there every day trying to find them things and get them on video, you know. And and I look back and I mean people give me grief for some of them early videos, but when I went back and started going through them. I'm like, why would they give me grief? Some of that's some of the best looking darn Bigfoot footage I've ever seen. And I mean, it's you know, well, I mean, catching them having. Hey man, I've them. learned I, I've learned over the years, uh, Wayne. It, it 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 doesn't matter what kind of videos we get, what I kind know. of <laughs> what kind of pictures we get. You know, we're actually going to get more grief from our fellow researchers than we are from the general public. Over any of this, well, it's like you know I that as well as I do. It's like I told the dude. It's like I told the dude on uh, on one of those groups the other day when he was giving me grief. I said I could bring you the most crystal clear picture of Bigfoot, and you'd still tell me you couldn't see it. I said it's just the way it is. Pete, until people's, it's it's what you call frequency. Until everybody's on the That's same frequency. Do you, do you think you can see things that other people can't see necessarily sometimes? Yeah, I believe I believe it's a it's it's weird because my wife can see them in pictures real good, but she can't see them out in public. She can't see them out there, but she can see them in the pictures. But there's people that can't see them in pictures that said they've seen one, you know, and and just you know, it's kind of like what the way the world is right now. You, the world is so divided right now. But the ones that really know what's going on in the world, they're the ones that know what really is going on in the world. But then you got the ones that think they know what's going on, you know, and it's kind of the same way with the cryptic world. It's the ones that, that sounds really kind of like Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> That's, what I'm That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know, they tend to say they're awake, but they're not. You want to know what awake is? The ones that know what Hillary Clinton really did. The ones that really, really know who run the world and who's, who's behind all these rights. I mean, that's the ones that are awake, the people that know that stuff. And it's also the people that, 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 that don't fall for none of this, like, like the face mask. I was one of the first people to come out and say uh, publicly that I hated that thing and I wasn't going to wear it. And look, 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 I'm, and I don't. I still, to this day... I'll put it on, walk in Walmart, and then I'll pull it right down. I won't worry. I'm not worried about getting sick because, I mean, they done gone and proved, the CDC then proven that, that 94% of those cases were related to other cases, you know, that they just called coronavirus. So, you know, and it's like right now, do you really believe? I just saw a video of Trump, Trump riding through North Carolina there was a hundred thousand people lined up on the side of that road. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of people all for like two or three miles. Do you really believe in your heart that that sucker ain't gonna get reelected? Because they're putting the dumbest dude they possibly can up against him, and it's all a ruse. People don't realize that he's gonna get reelected. He's gonna get reelected, and it's all a ruse that they want to do to keep all this other junk they're doing to us going. You know. How about make us sick and then then and and make us all try to make us sick and then when that don't work they gotta go do something else, you know? I mean, have you noticed that they ain't been spraying chemtrails anymore? You know. Well, you know, I voted for Donald Trump in the first election and I'll vote for Donald in this election. Donald is uh to me he's done a lot more for this country in the past four years than he, than he, yeah, he. I mean, I've done. Listen, I've done something for Richter. Y'all don't get mad about it when you see it. <laughs> I did something funny with Richter, but it, it's it's all for fun. It ain't got nothing to do with uh, it ain't with my opinion on what the world is. But but he wanted me to do something. He's doing these little political things. He wanted me to do something. He's gonna put it on the beginning of his next episode. It, it's funny as crap. I can't wait till y'all see it. <laughs> you know, it's weird how it's weird how. You know, and it's like I tried to tell Stacy, I don't want to be some boring Bigfoot guy that just every day you're out there taking pictures. I'd rather, hey, if a song comes on I can do, I'll sing it. And I ain't scared to put that out there. You know, and and, and not to mention, not to mention, you know, um, 
Richter, like I said, Richter does. Richter does these things. He, I remember a guy got mad, got mad at me, and he was, he, he couldn't win the argument. So he goes and gets the the Richter video about me. I said, dude, do you don't don't you know that I was in on that the whole time? Don't you know I even shot some video for that? I said, so don't believe everything you see. <laughs> it's like if you can't laugh at yourself. And then, and you can't let this stuff go by and ignore it, you know, because there's going to be people, like I said, if you, you know, not everybody's going to see what I, it's not everybody's going to see what I put out there, but, but the ones that do see it, you know, that, 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 that's the ones that I'm putting it out there for, you know, I got to tell anybody, if you don't see it, it's going to scroll by You don't have to get mad about it. You know, if you can't see it, then don't, don't make no comment about it. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's I, right, I, man. I mean, you know, there's no need in putting other people's, there's no need in people getting out here and putting down other people's work and what other people get out and, and the videos they shoot, the pictures they take. You know, ha if you've got an opinion about it, keep it to yourself. Don't be out here trying to, to run somebody down. You, you know uh, what? That's you not what this is all about. You know the way I look at it. I look at it like, hey, if they got out there and they put their feet and walked those woods and and they recorded that stuff, then they're no different than we are. You know, maybe it may, it may not be as good as stuff, but they still they made the effort to try. And I mean, you got that's the way. That's the way everybody needs to have the attitude. They need to have the attitude. Hey, look, they made the effort to try. You know, and. And sometimes people get good, really good stuff. I mean, I I see it all the time. You know, only thing I don't like is people go and get or the Colorado Bigfoot stuff, and then they'll send it to me for approval. I mean, I don't need to get that stuff for approval. I mean, what do I need it for? You know, but I'm like, send me your stuff, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you if it's good or not. You know, and I like it. Well, if somebody tells me, hey, I got Bigfoots on my property. Can you see what this is? And I'll look at that picture and I'll say, yep, I see one back in the back, you know, you know, but I won't post nothing. I kid you not. I will not post anything any anymore if it ain't looking right at you. I don't, I just don't like filming. I don't like putting them out there that are way, way far away. And even if you can see it, I still don't like putting that out anymore. And man, what a video I got for you coming up when I get off of here. <laughs> I mean, it's just like it's like you go out there the other day, and I just went out there to meet a fan. I didn't go out there to, to hunt any. I mean, go find anything. But I come back, and like I said, I come back with three or four videos, and I was like, I didn't even expect them one video, much less, much less two other ones. But then, but that that, that day was even good because I got a um. Oh, let's see, somebody comment on it. Well, that day was good because I got a um, um, what I call a shape shifting. I don't think it's a Bigfoot. The thing I watched it, it changed its face. It, it had a weird alien looking face. Then it had a human face. Then it had a cat face, and it changed like three times in that video. And to me, that's that's when you go out there and you get something that crazy. Uh, that's what makes it worth it because you you know you won't you don't you you start thinking, hey, there's there's more things out there. There's lizard people out there. There's shapeshifters. There's um, you know, I think dog man are what's getting confused by werewolves. I think they're con they're confused. People that say they've seen a werewolf, huh? if you really run into a real werewolf, I don't think it's gonna look like a dog man. You know. No man's just a big version, a dog version of Bigfoot, you know, and, and I believe it might just be another. Well, no, I know what dog man is. Dog man is the descendant of Anubis. I think it, I think that's the descendant, you know. I mean, I was told this, too, by the Sasquatch. I said, why don't dog man ever sleep? Because, I mean, one would sleep in the woods where I was at. I said, why don't he ever sleep in the woods up there where you, you guys do? They said because he's down there guarding the portal. So he guards the portal where they travel. I mean, and I'll tell you another thing that blowed, blowed my mind. I would do like, well, I'll tell you, I won't tell you this one. This is, this one, this one is, uh, 
This one is the one I say anybody else heard it, they would crap their pants. I mean, can you can you imagine being out there and you know something's coming and you hear it stomping and it's going boom, boom, and the ground is shaking and you hear him, he's going, oh, oh, and he's getting closer to you and closer to you. And you're thinking to yourself, this sucker's going to squish you when he gets there. But you know what happened to me? I was ready to get the shot of the lifetime. And then after I heard that, put the camera down and said, thank you. <laughs> Did you believe that? Yeah. <laughs> you know why thank I said thank you? Three. Well, the reason I said thank you is because who else has ever heard them doing that? I yeah. mean, whoever has ever heard them stomping the ground like that? I mean, to me, it was an honor for them to do it, you know, because I've always said, go out there and get what you can get when you get it. If you come back home and you got nothing, just just be grateful. Go back another day and there might be something there. You know, I ain't been out there in three days and 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 the day I go out there and the day I go out there and all kind of crap happened. I mean, I had walking behind me and I don't know. I don't know where that come from, but I had walking behind me. I was hearing these really, really strange yells. And, uh, and um, you know, I was hearing these really strange yells. And, and like I said, I got I saw saw one moving around, and I went back to investigate. And, but I got eye shine. I didn't see. I, I knew he was there, but he, went, he stopped moving when I got close to him, you know. But then to go back up for the third time, and look in that one spot, and then that dog man's there. I mean, it's crazy when you know that's the same freaking dog man that you recorded a few months. I mean, a few months ago, it's the same one. It just tells you they stay in. They do is they do stay in the same place. But I, I'm I'm like I'm like you guys. I believe they do migrate because I haven't seen I haven't seen. That one Bigfoot that I recorded in that same area, I haven't seen him since I recorded it. So I think they do migrate. and uh, But I think those dog men, they live there. I think that one little family of dog men live in that one area now. And, but I ain't seen no Bigfoots in that area no more. So it makes you wonder, don't it? <laughs> Maybe dog men took over that spot. You know. All right, guys. Well, we're coming up on an hour and twenty minutes. Y'all want to go ahead and start wrapping it up? Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> Wayne, before before we get out of here, bud, and I ask this to you know all my guests at the end of the show, uh, end of every show. Um, what's your feelings, bud, on on as far as as what well, what is your advice to to our viewers uh, if they happen to be in the woods and and actually run up on one of these things? You know, what would don't, be the best thing for them today? If it's like in areas where I'm at, don't don't take no guns with you. Don't have no knives with you. Go out there with a positive attitude. Go out there with your mind clear. I mean, you don't know how I was so mad. I was arguing with during AT and T today about trying to double my bill that I was I was on a war path with them. By the time I got in those woods, my mind was clear and I was in a good mood. It's like my mood changed. It's like being in the woods does that to you. But but I think if you walk into the woods now, if you're in an area where there's no, you know, bears or cougars and stuff, you've got to have something for protection. But but if you go into an area like, say, in North Carolina, there's not going to be up in the, unless you go up in the mountains. There's no bears, so there's black bears here, actually, but they're not going to come out and mess with you as long as those Sasquatch are around. I mean, everybody said that this is weird. The black bears were spotted way down the road, but not where the Bigfoots were. And do you know, my when I moved there, there was a deer blind right in my backyard on a tree. There was a ton of deer <laughs> right in there. By the time those Bigfoots started coming around, you know how many deer we saw? Zero. <laughs> but they were everywhere before that. It's like now the only time you see deer is if you go way up the road where the big ones are. But yeah, just like I said, you you got to go out there with a positive outlook. You got to go out there with, I would say that's like, you know, peace, peace and love in your heart. You go out there with that and you go out there and want to believe and you want to see and you really, really want to see 
something might happen. You know, you go out there and say, "Oh, I'm gonna catch this sucker. I know where they're. I know where they're at. We're gonna go to the spot that such and such saw it." You know how many times I would think. That's why I hated finding Bigfoot. You know, they would always go and get people and go back to a location where they saw a Bigfoot two years ago. Now, you think that same Bigfoot's there two years later? It's not going to be. And, and it's like the two I saw running up a hill. I mean, I don't think for a second that I'm going to go back and try to run that hill that two was running up. You know, but, but I saw them. First, I thought it was two bears. I started thinking it was two bears, and then, then they stood upright and started walking. When they got up the hill, I said, well, that kills that case. That was two Sasquatches running up there. But, you know, at nighttime when you're riding the roads, um, and then people told me, I mean, I've not had it happen to me other than seeing those go up the hill. But but there's people, there's people told me that they've stopped, that they've had to been stopped in the middle of the road by one. You know, he didn't try to hurt them. He just run out. He kind of run out and stopped and looked at them and then ran. There's one area I want to go back to so bad. The lady told me it's it's haunted as crap already, but it's also a lady saw a Bigfoot right at the rail, railroad tracks. Described it so good. And, I mean, like I said, when people tell you they saw it, don't, don't think they're crazy. I really believe anybody that – can sit there, and especially this day and age, with all the stuff on TV, there's no way if you have a sighting that you're not going to see it. You know what I'm saying? You know you're gonna you're gonna. That's what's helped, I think. But that's what's helped Bigfoot really because of the freaking commercials and all the shows that don't never show nothing. You know that irritates me too. That if I ever do get a show and they don't let me actually show my proof, what's the point of doing it? You know, and I have exactly right. Yeah, one, you know, if I get one, it's going to be based on my personality. It's going to be based on my life. It ain't going to be based on, you know, it won't be based on that, you know, because I don't want it. You know, it's like Stacy Brown told me, he said, you're a character. He said, you don't know you're a character, but you're a character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wayne, buddy, I want to thank you for coming on the show tonight. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, you're welcome to come back anytime you anytime you get any new evidence and you want to come back and share it with us. You got my uh, email. Just hit me up. Let me know. Uh, we'll be glad to have you back on. Uh, folks, we've enjoyed the night. We've enjoyed having Wayne on. Uh, Blake, you got anything before we go, bud? No, I just want to say thank you for coming on the show, Wayne. And guys, if uh, like we say all the time, if you ever if you have any encounters that you would like to report, or if you'd just like to come on the show and to share your stories, you're more than welcome to. Um, just email Ricky, and we'll uh, we'll get you on the show. Oh yeah, like I said, just uh, whenever this thing gets ready, share it on my timeline. I'll I'll share it. I'll share it and. I mean, I hope, like I said, I hope you got a lot of people watching because usually when I do one, that, that a lot of people do watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wayne, again, thank you, bud. Blake, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and good night. Good night. See y'all later.